Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from inside ETFs in Hollywood, Florida. And joining me for this segment, we have Rob Hughes. He's the head of Index and Advisory Services at NASDAQ Global Indexes. And we're going to take a look at NASDAQ's approach to the ETF industry. Rob, thanks so much for joining us on set at Inside ETFs. And we're just not an ETF lister. We take it from three different lenses when we approach the ETF industry. Yeah, and I think what you see down here and what's so exciting about this particular conference is you see that the health of the overall ETF ETF industry is in incredibly good right now. Uh, from a provider perspective, you're looking at new products uh, coming to market in the thematic and ESG space. So from an index provider perspective, we look at it and say there's a lot of opportunity from, for us. You have from a, a from a listings perspective, you have the new ETF rule uh, and you have the semi-transparent active ETFs coming to market. So from a product perspective, we're seeing innovation there. Uh, and then we talked a lot about this morning on the panel, uh, the role of ETF model portfolios for financial advisors and how that's going to kickstart potential potentially even more growth within the ETF uh, industry as far as adoption is concerned. Yeah, particularly with the RIAs. That's been a really big topic that we've been covering. Let's learn uh, more about what you spoke on your panel today. Um, with the industry, what are you hearing from the constituents? Yeah, I think the one of the big topics that we're talking about down here this, this time around is certainly the ESG reality. Uh, and so, you know, when we're talking about ESG, we are clients both on the RIA side and on the indexing side, uh, we're, I think, playing in this middle ground where is it an allocation or is it an investment philosophy? And so when we think about it from an indexing perspective, we want to provide the opportunity for advisors to make allocations towards an ESG-related strategy. When we're talking about it from an RIA perspective, what we're trying to aim for is a consistent, comfortable conversation where the advisor feels educated about ESG and the nuances of it, and also the investor ultimately feels comfortable about it. So when you have those consistent, comfortable conversations and you have great products to allocate towards, that's really where we feel like that's the flywheel of success for the ETF uh, industry as it relates to ESG. And you also spoke a lot about competition. It's tough and it should be within the space. Yes. Uh, well, I think, look, at the end of the day, what's great about the U.S. market is it's incredibly competitive, uh, and that's a great model for us to uh, export around the world. I think it also makes sure that whatever we do as far as ETF issuers, ETF listings, being an index provider, being an RIA, is we're delivering value ultimately to the end investor. Uh, and so I think as we continue to see zero commission fees, zero transaction fees, uh, ETF model portfolios are going to really benefit from that. Uh, in the ETF industry and drive this kind of next phase of ETF distribution. You also think that model solutions that really is a market disruptor here and it's going to be a game changer for the ETF industry as well, not just as a low cost solution, but also for financial advisors. It could change their practice. Absolutely. Uh, so we look at model uh, guided ETF model portfolios as a serious disruptor to how traditional ETF uh, distribution has been done. But really it's just a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a reality that comes from the, the advisor in terms of they're under a lot of pressure, uh, they're under a lot of competition, and what they need to do is get into a position where they can scale their portfolios, scale their practices, take less time doing the day-to-day -day portfolio management, take more time going out finding new clients, going out making sure that their big clients are, are successfully and that they uh, feel very good about the, uh, the, the advisor that uh, they're working with. And so that model portfolio is going to help them scale their business in a way that we don't feel that uh, has necessarily been done yet. All right, we spoke about the growth in the U.S. Let's talk about Asia. That's a region that's strategically important for your business as well. You launched uh, new features on the NASDAQ 100 there. Yeah, so it, what's really exciting about the NASDAQ 100 is we continue to see business development opportunities all over the world. It's such a great exposure. It gives you the, the ability to invest in companies that are really leading the charge in terms of global growth and innovation. And so that future that we did in Taiwan with our uh, partners in Tyfax and CME uh, was actually the first ever futures contract listed outside the, the U.S. And so it's just the really kind of the first step along the, the path towards how do we create the liquidity environment globally that we have here in the U.S. with U.S. Li listed ETFs, leverage and inverse ETFs, futures contracts, options, all of those things are developing all over the world and we're really excited about the opportunity that that presents us. And going back to ESG, you launched a sustainability product in Australia. 
Yes, we did, and, and that, that is with our, with our partners at BetaShares. That's actually one of the larger ETFs in the world in, in terms of that sustainability. But I think it, it shows you that the things that we're talking about here, specifically at this conference and in the US, those things are happening all over the world. Uh, and so I think, and they're, they're asking the same questions. Uh, and we can deliver a lot of educational resources. We can deliver a lot of on the ground resources in terms of distribution. Uh, so what we do here in the U.S. is reflective of what we see as demand overseas. And that uh, product in Australia is a perfect example that the ESG conversation is global. Oh, it's not just local. It certainly is. And Latin America, you're seeing opportunity there too. That's another region to tackle. Yeah, well, what's really exciting, we launched our very first NASDAQ 100 product in Brazil uh, in December with XP. It was a structured product. Uh, and so again, you know, having the opportunity to take the NASDAQ 100 ex exposure and uh, introduce it to millions of new potential investors is really what makes the overseas story just as exciting as the, the home shore story, the U.S. story, is that you get to go uh, and see what types of investments uh, investors are looking for and exposures are looking for all over the world. And we get to talk about the NASDAQ 100, which is uh, one of the best stories out there. All right. Great 2019. Looking forward to more in 2020. Thanks Absolutely. for joining us at Inside thanks. ETFs. And thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melantrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.